your fault that you come in and break this news to me. But I'm so invested. I'm so invested in your love life, kid. And I'm living vicariously through you. I got two kids. Tomato, tomato. I should have named him tomato and then tomato. I should have named my kid Digging Balls. Digging, comma, balls. Digging balls. And then the teacher's going to be like, is digging, 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 comma, balls? Digging, comma, balls here? Digging, comma. Okay, digging, comma, balls. Yeah, see, <laughs> it sounds even better. So, this gentleman comes into the office today. I'm like, hey, we need to record three times before I take my road trip to California, which is all going to be on Christopher Love's Life. Go subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We will be right with you. But today, the beauty of owning a business and getting to discuss with associates, friends, vendors, and people is you get to know them. And what better way do you get to know somebody than blown up love life, relationship facts. It is just the most sentimental time. So the girl that we had in Christopher Love's Life go watch that video, there's a clip of me going, you have no idea what you're dealing with when it comes to religious young women. Oh, I have no idea. No idea. I'm a lost puppy. <laughs> chasing tails. She broke up with you. No, not like that. She, she so we were never, curve. no, no, you we were never. You weren't a thing. We were I never a that, thing. You wanted it to be a thing. Oh, yeah. You let Shit it happens, man. Absolutely. But how did she break the news to you that you are not a thing? She said that like, hey, um, I'm trying to take it slow. And she was like, I'm just not feeling the feelings like all there yet. And I was like, okay, I'll give you time. And then she said something about her, her friends. So I, I met them and she was like, yeah, maybe I, like I should hook you up with my friends if this doesn't work out. Like set you up on like a date. And so now we're all going to Enid. So is that all she said? Yeah. And then like today she was asking me to hang out. I kind of was like, eh, I'm busy. And then like later we went to Sonic. And what'd she say at Sonic? She just like looked at me and stared. Like she wasn't like hurt in a way that I was like for meeting one of her friends instead of, you know, you know. But so if you don't know, Dakota here is a customer first who turned into an associate, comes on the podcast, shoot the shit because he would just sit here and shoot the shit with me. And we have a good rapport. And I feel like you'll listen to me when I tell you cold turkey that broad cold turkey. Do not talk to her. Do not text her. Nothing. One of two things are going to happen. She forgets your fucking name. Or she comes running and wishing that she had her best friend, lover boy back happy-go-lucky guy but not a single word all radio silence to her and don't talk about her to her friends just imagine she didn't even exist i got a plan that was kind of the plan that's a, yeah, it's, of course it, i'm gonna give it you know like and she you knows she always wants to know where i'm at so i go radio silent for a day she's gonna be crying to daddy the daddy who can't walk no, no like she gonna be crying like back into my arms like oh well let, let's we'll see what out. happens. I'm telling you, 48 hours at the minimum, man. One day is not good enough. She'll find something to do. A couple of days for sure. Now nah, she's going to see that I'm, I'm on Snapchat. But that's the point. And she's going to get pissed. Let her. What does her feelings have to affect yours for? I don't know. I mean, I got four instead of one now. So he, he's hoping, now, just in case she ever sees this in the future, I wouldn't say... That, I like that. But. Yeah, I know, but her friend's like setup thing could have been her way for her to be like, oh, let me see if he's actually into me or if he would actually go out with my friends or say yeah to it, and you did. Yeah, at first did. I was like, hell no, and then I was like, wait, what's their names? And then she was like, no, you already said no. I was like, no, I want to know. Women. But so women. in other words of craziness, let's get back to what happened during business hours. So we were talking about... The crazy customers that come in demanding. Uh, so the old redneck guy who came in here that was like, the CIA is after me. I'm a, a, a YouTube sensation. He came in the second time. Sorry, the CIA after me guy, old guy didn't want to pay for his repair. Yeah, fuck you. All of a sudden is now a YouTube and TikTok star. Mm. Now I wanted to show you his TikTok channel because this, my friend, is amazing. I mean, I just have a hard time believing some of this bullshit. Well, so now I can't find it now. But so he, basically, he thinks the CIA is after him. He thinks, because he says he's a veteran, that the Veterans Affairs is after him. 
but then he won't go to the Veterans Affairs and he goes to the doctor here. But all he could do was blame his doctor for his broken phone because apparently he <coughs> threw it at his doctor for not giving him pills. So I looked up all the N.A. spots here. The idea that this man has been followed because he is addicted to drugs by his doctor was so asinine it scared me to check in his phone. I was like, that's weird. All of a sudden he's going to think the shit's on his phone. I'm tracking him. Something's going on. And I said, fuck it. Okay, I'm going to charge you 200 bucks and get your phone done. It was a Nokia X100 screen. It was like 70 bucks. But it was really funny because then he, every time he came in after the first time, and the first time I was like, no, it's my job to be your friend so I can make money off you. I'll be as friendly as you want until you cross the time where it's not being paid and you want my free time. Somebody I give my free time to, I like you. I'll give you my free time. Somebody like that needs to pay for my free time. So here you go, sir. Checked out the, the second time he came in. Got him a case and a screen protector. Third time to pick his phone back up for his original phone repair. was like, bing, 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 done. And he kept talking. I'm talking to somebody else who's about to pay me $300 for another repair. And I'm like, oh, well, I have to help this customer, sir. Everyone's in line, blah, blah, blah. And he's going off about Trump and the world and everyone's out to get him. But Willie Nelson checked on his shit. And I was like, really? Oh, well, let's see. I don't think Willie Nelson can really even type right now. I think he just... You know, man, the world is full of greenery. And he's going to die soon. But it's unfortunate. Billy Nelson had his time. No, it's been a crazy week, man. It's been busy. We made 1600 bucks yesterday, and I was only open for half the day. Wow. But that was deep. That's deep full of, full of money. No, it's crazy because uh, I didn't expect this business. So my wife originally worked with me the first six months we were open. She went back to work for her old company because they offered her a bunch of money to go back, like a signing bonus and all this stuff. And uh, we, with the robbery in Sacramento, it, we had invested like 120, I told you, thousand dollars. And I was like, well, you know, you can go back for a little while. But now she's in this like, I'm so empowered, I want to stay and work. And I'm like, just quit. No, quit. We're making 40 G's a month. You're good. Just quit. We don't need it. If you help me, we make more money. You taking home three grand a month sitting for eight hours a day is not helping anybody. I'd rather pay you when I'm going to pay a babysitter, which is $3,000 a month to watch my kids. 3000 a month? 100 Holy bu- 100 shit. 100 bucks a day, two kids, typically 50 bucks a day per kid for a decent, you know, daycare, food, garbage, all that. 100 bucks a day. For two kids, yeah. 10 to what? 8.30 to 5. It's a long ass time. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I was thinking like, that's $500 in a week. Don't you make that now? Yeah, well, like with taxes and everything, you know. So what are you taking home now? It's been two weeks since your raise. 13. You start your own business, man. There's a guy who said, let your work finance your dreams. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, but... I heard it from somebody else that your work finance your dreams. Work your eight to five so you can play five thirty to seven to nine. I am much more about reinvesting into a skill set. My wife always hates that I buy new things, all the flashy stuff. I don't really buy like new watches and jewelry or shoes and clothes. Like I just bought some new shirts. My wife bought me this dad American shirt we were supposed to wear on Fourth of July. I bought a couple of button ups, like Ariat button ups, real nice shirts. They're like sixty bucks a piece. But I got buy two, get two free from the guy because I was talking to him. He's like super religious at, uh, what was that, the Weatherford station, the gas station in Weatherford. And so he was just talking about, like, come to the church. Da, da, da. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not religious. He's like, you might find God or you might find a good time. Whatever it is, you're welcome either way. I was like, oh, that's such a nice pickup line, man to man. But basically his whole like conversation pitch was because I was buying something. You know what I mean? And so that's the same way I was with other people. But the more time I have to do that with crazy people like that, the less money I make. So yesterday, half a day strictly working, which is four and a half hours, busted out 13, 14 repairs, average $100 ticket with a 20% cost. Pretty good money. I'm making $80 per ticket, 15, 20 minutes. I get a lot of downtime. Come me, swallow me, drip down the side of me. Imagine if you could make $1,300 a day. Oh, gobble. gobble me, swallow me, drip down. Would you work seven days a week? Fuck no. I'd work five. Why? 
I don't know. I like to have two days off. Saturday to go fishing and Sunday to drink a beer. What do you do when you drink a beer? Watch NASCAR. You kidding really? me? Hell yeah. You're a you, 20 year old who actually likes NASCAR? Dude, hell yeah, dude. I love NASCAR. You're talking about Alex Bowman. You got like Denny Hamlin, Martin Trucks Jr., Kyle Larson. I mean, I can go, the list goes on and on. AJ Allmendinger. I mean, there are so many freaking drivers. There's 40 what drivers. About NASCAR. Oh, dude, I love it. Exciting. Just like watching them race, you know. And off the turns three and four, here comes Alex Bowman passing Martin Truex Jr. for the lead. Now back up the straightaway, away, Alex Bowman shifting into third. You know, like they just commentate. You know, you listen, so you, you like watch it. Yeah, I'm a commentator, so I, I like to listen for that stuff. They, they even like they talk, they don't just talk about you know NASCAR. They talk about what's going on inside the okay, field. So turn the sound off. Would you watch it? Like if you pulled up like a clip of NASCAR, like like I would sit there and watch it and and enjoy. No. Yeah. Really? I love NASCAR, yeah. It's like watching them, you know, just... People say, like, oh, you, they just go in, like, circles. Like, that's true they do. They come in circles. That's that's a sport. It's drivers. Go drive. And you get the same experience. Dude, you just missed a good hour and a half of racing. I'm not going to waste my time. You know how much crammed my time is now just to take time out to do a podcast? Like, I've got two other businesses I'm building right now, the woodworking business and something I can't disclose on YouTube at the moment. There's so many things I'm doing that other things are taking the back seat. Like, Made by Love right now is at a standstill where, you know, I need to restock the soaps, the lotions. I don't have enough of me. If I could just reproduce strictly, like, clones of myself, I would be a multi-billionaire. I would be, too, because I could be doing whatever the hell I wanted while dipshit me is up at work. That's not how that works typically, but oh. you'd have to, like I said, if you were making thirteen to seventeen to eighteen hundred bucks a day, absolutely, it's it's crazy. It, I didn't think that Woodward would yield this much money, this much need for our services. So I hired an uh, administrative assistant, somebody with management experience. Hopefully, they're good. Yeah, the start Monday, and then I got a new guy starting on Monday who's I'm not so glad about because he reminds me of a old employee called fuckboy frank fuck you fuckboy frank he uh he went to, <coughs> to the labor board with handwritten notes of overtime and was like oh you know i did 48 hours this month of overtime i did this much of overtime yeah 48 hours no no just one week yeah he was like oh i kept i got calls after hours never got calls after he got <clears> text <throat> messages before like 15 minutes before work about reminding things to be brought but shit like that and so apparently any contact after work they were like, yeah, you owe him for double time, overtime. He worked one week for five days in a row, covered somebody for the sixth day. So the sixth day was overtime. Little shit that like, okay, if I don't microscopically watch every single person do everything, I, got, I think he got paid like 3500 bucks. There's your severance, Frank. Enjoy it. I'm sure it's already spent and you're back at your dad's house doing absolutely jack shit with your life crying about your inability to procreate and certain affinities for anime i don't care it's a thing that it's a fit and style that some of these newer like bernie sanders loving kids have oh god yeah he, he actually campaigned for bernie sanders which is funny not the new guy the uh, the old guy but uh it, it's weird because man they always seem so friendly and and great at first like they got drive and then I'm sure this kid's going to come in with a bunch of fucking yerba and mochi and, and fucking matcha to drink. And be like, oh, my God, here we go. Like, it's so good. And take these fucking pills. And he'll be on Adderall and Xanax. And something will be wrong. I don't know, though. It's, uh, I'm excited and concerned. But we're taking on, so what is it, two people starting pay on one of them is 1250 by 30 hours a week. That'll be 750 every two weeks plus 900 every two weeks. So that's 1650 every two weeks off of our 35,000. That's 3,200. So that's 10%. We're giving up 10% of the business hiring two people. That's a big deal when I'm doing it my own. I may be stressed out for the, you know, seven hours a day we're open, like getting it all done, but I'm making this money now and I'm hopefully going to take some of that stress off giving 10% of the business's profits away to two individuals. And that's before taxes, of course, and payroll tax and all that stuff out here, which is a lot easier than California. But still, the idea of hiring two people on is scary because you're like, okay, 
I'm going to give you all this shit. We're going to expand into other areas so I can take in more work, train you on work. It'll go a little faster. We'll get our name out there. Then I can take more of the profits, put it into advertising. And if I take, say, 2000 a month to put it into advertising or even build my own billboard out front, because the <laughs> landlord said yesterday that I could build my own marquee if I financed it. And if I do that, it's going to be one of those fucking truck trailers that I'm just going to park out there, stake it to the ground with an alarm, put up some flags every day. Boom. That way I can take it whenever we move. Imagine I gave you $100,000. What are you going to do with it? First thing I'm going to do is get myself an apartment. Why? So I can be on my own, so I can have my own place. And you'll I'm going to spend $6,000 just furnishing that apartment up. Right? The money I make for my job is going to be rent. The other money I'm going to do, um, probably just going to put that in savings. Oh, and buy a four-wheeler. That's the only thing I need. And then what are you going to do with a four wheeler? You can't even tell it. I'll get it shipped. If I have a hundred thousand dollars, I could spend up to a good amount of money shipping it. You know, I mean, I'll still have eighty thousand dollars by the time I want everything I want. Everything I want. I also have about eighty thousand dollars left. I don't need much. You're going to have eighty thousand left after after that. Yeah. Apartment. Does, does anyone in the comments right now, before I educate this man, want to tell him? how much money he would have after being gifted a hundred thousand dollars i'd only have seventy thousand of it left 60. oklahoma is 30 percent federal F fuck that fuck you'd have 60. i would have 40 yeah, after you probably have about 60 after you if you paid it lump sum right then well i'm talking about after taxes yeah, you so get you after have, the apartment i have about have forty thousand left yeah that's okay. But then you also have, say the apartment is $1,000 a month Yeah. for rent, utilities, whatever. That's 12000 you have to set aside to pay the rent for a year. Okay. So that's your new emergency fund. Bang. Then I'm at $28,000. So you just got gifted $28,000 and your own apartment for a year. It's awesome. That's awful. Oh. That's awful. It shows you the value of money in real time and what you would do with it. Your goal, or my goals at least, when I get a lump sum of money, say we have a break in and it's like Black Friday and I, everything gets sold, then essentially I need to take the insurance money and reinvest it and double it. And I need to reinvest and double it. And I need to reinvest and double it. It's the only way. If I don't keep doubling my money, the government cuts it in half. Talking about Black Friday, my mom used to not go shopping on Black Friday because she used to tell me that Black Friday was for the less fortunate people, like the black communities. And so she we never go. She that. did. No way. She did. She said that it was for black people because that's why it's called Black Friday. And yeah. And she didn't mean like racist. She was like, she was like, yeah, it's, it's for like, yeah. I don't You're know. You're going to give me a stroke. Well, I was like six at the time. <clears throat> and you remember this clearly at six. Oh, yeah. I was pissed because I wanted a bike. Like a mongoose or whatever they call them. H huffy. And it was like thanks around Thanksgiving time. We used to go to Black Friday all the time. I think I found out from a movie that Black Friday meant that you got certain tax benefits from selling at the end of that quarter and so on and so forth. And they could sell it to get the inventory out before the first of the year so that it was discounted on their end. Um it's more of a movement from being like in the red to being in the black. They should not teach Martin Luther King Jr. on Black Friday sales because it gets kids very mixed up with the world's going on with. Younger kids apparently at six. But so like there's difference of like how the money in the world moves and how when I sell something on Black Friday, it's for me to get it off before the end of the year. I could zero out and just say everything's garbage, throw it away, and write that off for taxes the next year. I won't make any money, but I won't lose any money for what I paid for it. You know what I mean? So, like, if I have expired goods every day in, like, uh, Safeway, whatever, they roll it out, throw it out, they get a tax break on that for what they paid for it. So if I buy $200 worth of stuff and it's gone bad at the end of the year, I can get a, a tax incentive to throw that away. The joke with Black Friday was for the less fortunate was, like, everybody's needy. Even billionaires are needy. just depends on what they need. I got that mongoose. You finally got it? I got that mongoose that year. That's probably why your mom was like, give it to the less fortunate. You already got it. No, nah, she said we got to go home early because 
And then I think then she said she had to go back in town. So I know damn well she went and got that bike. Now back then, how big was this town? Shit, felt like a city to me. But I was I was a little man. It's probably about the same. That's what I'm worried about. My kids is how big they'll feel this uh, town is. Because we come from like a really big town. It ain't gonna feel like shit. They're gonna think this place is a it's ghost garbage. It's ghost now compared to what it was. It's like three thirty in the morning. Not a soul in sight. City's looking like a ghost town on a something something night. And the thunder rolls. Have you heard Garth Brooks? Yeah. Little uh. And the thunder roll. Oh, did you see Jason Aldean just got canceled? The thunder rolls. No. Dude, Jason, you know who Jason Aldean yes. is, Yes. Right? Crazy town full of neon greens, everybody leaves. So he made Try It in a Small <laughs> Town, which has uh, got 6.3 million views. In six days. In six days. And then you got a bunch of, like, African Americans... Um, you know, this is not American. Everyone's Those fly fucking. Overstays. Everyone's calling this racist. So we're gonna react to this. Anyone? I I, I don't I don't know. I don't I know if this is good for fucking social media or whatever. I've not seen this yet. So so Jason Aldean here is showing parts of riots with Antifa members, Black Lives Matter riots, riots in general, all over. Carjacking old lady at a so there's from America to like any anti-America abortion, uh, carjacking, drugs, everything he's showing here. So this is getting crazy attention that it's racist, <clears throat> homophobic, anti-rights. All kinds of people are saying that that is like against the world of Americans. I don't see how. All he's saying is try it in a small town community. You'll get fucking killed. I mean, if you think it's offensive, you're you're soft, first yeah. off. Or you're a furry. <laughs> yeah, well, so we came from California where that shit was happening daily. All of it. Oh, they try that shit here. You're getting fucking shot. Exactly, but that's one of the reasons. <laughs> like, I brought my guns, my kids, my money, everything here. It, it is slow. It is tiny. It is very odd. I wouldn't say it's bigoted. Nobody's been hateful. Uh, there's been some weird, you know, eyes when I wear a pink shirt, but that's what it is. Real men wear pink. It doesn't really matter. It's like, there. so I don't care. If you want to be gay, be gay. You want to be bi, trans, whatever. I've employed every one of them. I mean, do, it. do what you want. That's just not for me. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. I've had an employee once, and this is where I'm getting, that uh, tried to push. He He would drop that he had dreams about me. He had very unhealthy thoughts and, like, conversations with the management about how he was attracted to me and my new dad energy since I had just become a father. Um, and this That's was fucking tw- weird. 2020. And he was uncomfortable and wanted to let me know. He was advised against it, written a statement, the whole nine told not to do it. Still, he came out while I was talking to a customer. I was like, I just needed to let you know that I am attracted to you. And if you ever wanted to discuss it or have a drink and got fired. So that was one of those jokes about, well, somebody has this mentality in a workplace. It's very weird. So he he made a case, you know, to unemployment that he was discriminated and fired against because he's a homosexual. Nobody cared. It was just the most awkward disciplinary action that we had to take because he was advised not to be a weirdo. So it just reminded me of that with... uh, we were talking employment and stuff, and gosh. But, yeah, everyone's getting super mad at this. And I'm like, California is like the burning bush that is not talking to you through God. You know what I mean? It's just on fire. And you're like, I don't want to piss on that. Let it burn. It is what it is. Fucking try that shit here. Good luck. <laughs> I know. The idea is uh, small towns look after each other. So that's I mean, the like that, message. that video, like, oh, it kind of makes me mad in a way. Like, if that shit happened here, like... Within an hour, you'd be Not fucking... Not an hour. 15 minutes, you'd have people. You have to give me an update if you took the advice and what she does with it. If she stops contacting you, then we know for sure she's not the one. If she runs and, like, figures out that she's the girl of your dreams, it's like, you know what, I'm just... I, I'm confused, and now I know what I want because I miss you. Boom. She's the one. Put we'll her, find out what happens. Well, because I'll tell you a story. This, is, this isn't this is business related, but this is heart related. This is during business hours. This happened while I was working. So I was dating my now wife, Leslie, 
we had gotten, I had just broken up with a girl and gotten robbed. She had taken like all the stuff in the house and ghosted me. I had caught her in the act. Oh. She was taking money out of the safe, called the cops, called her dad, said that I was yelling at her because she was stealing from me. So of course I was raised voice. Everyone lets her take everything. It's like money, jewelry, personal, my grandfather's effects. Never got those back, by the way. But so I had to sue her. So I'm going through the lawsuit process. It's a month after we broke up and I'm like, should I ask for to get her back or, you know, what am I going to do? Is it that I really hate this girl? And I, I, somebody had mentioned that my now wife had been beat up by her ex-boyfriend. And so I was like, okay, shit, man steps up, boom, hey, let me call you. Are you all right? What's going on? I hear you have a kid. I heard he put hands on you. You need help. I don't know who's in her life, who's going to step up. I knew her father was a little soft at the time, so it was one of those things. Who's going to step up to the plate for this woman? So it turns out it was a year previous. She's like, hey, you want to hang out? I'm driving to Fry's Electronics the first time I meet that shithead Eric. And uh, it was hilarious. She shows up in like the dress that she had 10 years earlier that we had gone on our first date in. And we hang out. I'm chasing her the entire time. Like, I'm the guy who's like, hey, what's up? I'm at her house every night. Her mom's offering to make me food, playing with her kid. The she same did. dress, 10 years? Yeah. And she was in if the shoe fits, wear it. I know. And she loved, it was amazing. <laughs> but the idea was that she she was not interested in, in me the way I was interested in her. So it was one of those things. I was trying way too hard, chasing her around. Like, no, hey, you want to go to Hawaii this weekend? I was supposed to go for my birthday three months into the relationship. And I had bought plane tickets. She didn't know that. I bought the plane tickets because um, I was making so much money and I was single now. I so was, you're trying to like buy her with your with your oh, absolutely. love? Absolutely. See, that's what I was trying to do with this girl. I'm a supporter. That's my love language. I will support you. Most men have one of three love languages. Support, touch. I'm or, support. <laughs> yeah. Or never food or uh Well, my food. Yeah. Too. For you. It's that's both. your receiving love language. Your giving love language is different. So my receiving is touch. I love when a woman touches me, loves on me, like support me, just just hold hold me, grab me, touch me, hold my hand the whole night. Yeah. Trophy style, like latch onto me. I won you, I want you to be near. Like lick my fucking earlobe, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. maybe not that, but. Absolutely, absolutely, I'm right there with you, earlobes. Uh, better than assholes. <laughs> the, uh, the idea was she looked at me like I was a week i was not a supporter i wasn't the man i was the woman chasing her she told me she's like a woman likes to be chased too and i was like what do you mean a woman likes to chase too it's like what do you mean i'm telling you right now i'm in it there's no chase needed you've got me i got nothing else going on i love your kid i love you it's like well i don't know if i love you and this is weird i got a kid i got to think about which is thinking for a whole other person this is going to take twice as long we're three months into it. Give me three months. Give me six months. I don't know. Turns out the next day I just showed up to her mom's house and I was like, yeah, what's for dinner? She's like, uh, go home. I will see you tomorrow. I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, well, you know what? I'm gonna go hang out with my friends. I was like, dude, you come over every Friday night. What the fuck? So I took offense to it. She comes over that night instead of hanging out with her friends. Like, yeah, I can't do this. Bye. No text, no call, no nothing. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I fucked up. My mother was like, you know what? Tell her that you'll leave a candle for her, a light on, whatever you want to call it. You'll leave that door open and then you're going to do your own thing. So then she was like, my mother, in the smartest shit she's ever told me, the one time Linda has ever had it right, I will say, I told her, I'm going to leave a door open. It is what it is. And we went to dinner for Father's Day or what was it? Somewhere around November, some birthday. And I told everyone, I was like, nope, I'm going to start seeing other people but I'll leave the door open for her. And everyone was so pissed. She's got a kid. What are you thinking? Dude, you're making so much money. You got your shit in front of you. Life's going good. Don't fucking do this. Take off, run. And I was like, nah, I'm just gonna put myself back on Tinder or Bumble at the time. So I started going on dates. A whole month later, I had been on a couple of dates. I started seeing this girl. Turns out stage five, stage seven, stage nine. She was a nine stage clinger. She was Mormon. Didn't know this until I saw her naked. Uh, turns out they wear specialty undergarments. Yeah, it's like uh, cloth. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. You never seen that? It's a, uh, it's very special temple garment. No offense, but yeah. So that's what was under, 
And I was like, what is this? She's like, well, I'm Mormon. I'm like, uh, okay. So I didn't sleep with her. I was like, yeah, I'm good. Uh, that just very thro like throws me off. Then she starts talking the next day about marriage and about kids. And like, if you just converted, I could get married to you tomorrow. Now I'm good. I don't want that. Sorry. Sorry, Hannah. You're lovely. Block. Like that much. But bye-bye. Her father was a customer. So then he started calling me, bitching, has my number. Oh, what would you do to my daughter? She worked at the zoo and somewhere else. Like, not really doing much with her life. Turns out she's just batshit crazy. Then she kept coming to these stories. Like, because you weren't with me, somebody assaulted me. Because you weren't with me this night, I got taken advantage of. Somebody stole my money. I got conned out of something. So, like, trying to make me feel bad. And I was like, don't call me. Don't text me. Don't do anything. Uh, but when all this was happening, the first night, first date we had had, where she went stage five clinger, my now wife had called me the next day and was like, who were you with? Why did you post that you had such a fantastic night? I know you were on a date and you wanted me to see this or whatever. And I was like, no, I was told you, leaving you do your thing, not talking to her, wasn't concerned my life with her. She's like, listen, you're mine. I'm yours. That's what it's going to be. I was like, really? I was like, okay, let's get married. Two or three weeks later, I proposed at a crack crack house place that was or the park just made this whole fake i broke down come to me fucking candle lit card boom ring bought her a ring and then we were married a year later no not even six like seven months later we had been together a year and we were married bing bong happy life but it's one of those things where like it took almost losing me to realize that she wanted to be with me and it was one of those things i had to snap out of this mindset that i was the chaser I had other options, other potential in my life. It wasn't just right now. So just try it. it the worst that's going to happen, she'll come back in another two years and be like, you know, all this shit happened, boom, boom, boom. The idea is it doesn't have to be now. But you can play around with it for a bit and see what she does. Get to know her a bit more in the, in the aftermath. Manipulate it a bit. Absolutely. It worked for me, and I wasn't trying to be malicious with it. I was just like, I'm going to go live my life. Best advice I got. And I stuck to it. My wife will tell you I didn't, and she'll be like, oh, you know, he did this, and I just I gave up, and I, she wants to have the face, but it is what it is. I don't, I'm not going through heartbreak. I was devastated. When that girl came and sat, my, the last time I was broken up with was by my wife. I would have told you, it did not fucking matter, but I'm telling you right now, it's just one of those, like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. I was like, man, yeah. fuck this. Yeah, but And then not, next day, I was like, she got some cute friends. <laughs> yeah. But still, it's one of those things where it's an adjustment period. You're just going through the, the semi-grief stages. She'll, she'll, she'll be uh, coming back to me pretty quick. No doubt. Just don't talk to her. Literally. Doesn't matter. Oh, she was wondering where I was. So I got to answer for her five hours. And I was on Snapchat between just those five answer. hours. As hard as it is, don't answer. <clears throat> be the asshole. I'm going to be a fucking prick. Not a prick. Oh. Be an asshole. She'll either learn to love you or love to hate you. Either way, she will be involved. That's a good sign. Yeah. Uh, sometimes. We've, had, we've had so many crazy customers this week. So many. Fuck. Why do you got to say fuck? Why is everything fuck? Because I like... Fuck is my favorite I'm gonna customer. I'm going to start this bit over, and then you're going to... Don't say fuck. <laughs> we've had so many crazy customers this week. That's so crazy. Do you know what the craziest was? Uh-oh. Let's hear it. We had somebody shit their pants. No shot. Not in the store. Earlier in the day. And come to the store. Oh, no. A, a lovely customer with an iPad Pro and a uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max. And a smelly pants. I did not. I was stuffed up the other day. I couldn't tell. But here was the interesting part. The wallet they pulled out from their back pocket mm -mm. smelled like absolute shit. The phone they pulled out from their other back pocket, absolute shit. What do you, what would anyone do when they're handed money and a cell phone in the scent of shit? And I was thinking about it, I'm getting like, oh, what would you do? It was a decent ticket. It was like 300 bucks profit on a uh, set of repairs. For breeze. I took the fucking money. You're absolutely right. And I sprayed <laughs> the money. That's, I'm not beneath it. But it's just on occasion you get some crazy customers that are going through something worse than you, and you deal with it. I, I, I couldn't understand. And there was a customer that almost poisoned me with cologne the other day. 
that uh, I opened her phone. It was like it had been doused in cologne. And uh, it's on the vlog if you didn't see it. But it was so funny because even I had to ask my wife what it was. It smelled like perfume or cologne. And so I had Alan and Ruto edit the the vlog so it made it seem like a customer got me by the – like there's a, a gas in the air. Ah. It was so funny. But if you could start a business, what would you do? Any business. Any business. It's going to make me good money on the day. You could d- disregard what money on the day you would get because I didn't make dollars fucking the first three months here. Do I have to work this job or can I hire people to do it? Well, you start like I'm doing now. I'm going to eventually not be working here. That's the goal. I want to get my woodworking business off the ground because I can make 15, 20 grand just on a single order. I made $1,000 making a fucking toy uh, train that took me 15 minutes. $1,000 profit. It's crazy. Like a grease monkey type shop. You got experience? Oil change and stuff like that. I can do oil change in 10 minutes flat. No, no matter what the the pickup is, I mean, you got the right tools. It's not that hard. Hire a couple guys that are older, you know, like 30, 40 that need a job and are willing to work. They'll bust their fucking ass. I'm going to look because I don't know if my Roku was plugged in because the front desk Roku always has this fucking cable that I step on. But I'm going to look at the clip and the guy who came in with computer repair experience came in with no resume. I, I saw him on Facebook talking about building computers for people. And it turns out that he has one fucking hand one hand really yeah and the other hand is like crippled and fucking molded together where he has this giant fin and a single nail popping out of it it was like you ever seen penguin from um that's really funny you say that because my uncle has a normal hand and then the one hand he does is just his thumb what's his name his name is jackie but he's like 60 so penguin right here how he has two fingers and a thumb that would scare the shit out of me don't hire this guy Uh, no offense so he's coming in on monday to take a test so i want to see if he can diagnose an issue with the desktop because if he can then i can start offering this and put other people's yeah i'm not taking in a lot of computer repair issues right now i take in like macbooks and apple products but the next step, the same way I did with my other business, I started with just phones, moved to phone and tablets, phone, tablets, software, phone, tablets, software, computers, phone, tablets, software, computers, custom hardware, custom hardware, custom software. And I moved over time by time. The more time I got, the more I could integrate. And then it became a general electronics help store. And it just blew up. It was real fun because I did not expect it. He had his hand in his pocket for the entire interview and whipped it out when he went to shake my hand. I was like, is that going to inhibit you? Like, I didn't mean to be an asshole about it. I was like, he's like, oh, usually people don't talk about it. I was like, does it hurt you working? I need to know before I hire you. If you can't work at 100%, what am I going to do with you? And he's like, well, nobody ever asked that. And I was like, so do you? does it inhibit you at all? What, what's the issue? He's like, oh, no, no issue. You're good. I was like, okay, come by Monday for the test. We do one like check in one uh, full test. Uh, the job I was going to give you, which is the fifteen an hour for the front desk person, is the one that the lady with the Spanish speaking fluent management experience is going to get. Apparently, she moved here because her uh, her baby daddy is here, and so instead of traveling with the kids, it was easier. But I found it to be the most ridiculous day for people wanting to start a job. So the kid, Seth, who's going to be starting next week, finally messaged me back. I was like, yeah, I can start Monday. I'm like, all right, cool. He's like, well, what's the pay? And I was like, we already discussed pay. He's like, oh, I just want to make sure we get it on record that I'm making this much. When I got hired at Tractor Whatever, uh, basically said I was going to be making X, and when my paycheck came, I was making Y. But this fucking town seems like their business dealings are super illegal. But if I had somebody doing all the check-ins, like when my wife was doing it, it would save me so much time. I could just knock out all the projects, work for three hours a day, say la vie, boom. Don't need to do much. Somebody just needs to be here to check it in, pick it up tomorrow, boom. That's the goal. Yeah, while there was a dinner, it's or running your store, we could be in here. At my other store, we had done the Kool-Aid Man thing, ran through the wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So we had our Made by Love working in there, and then the back of the store was the... uh, the podcast until we broke a hole in the, the wall to connect the two. So I was just talking 
to the landlord yesterday and I was like, hey, so what would you rent next door to me for? Because I called him and I was like, hey, the paint on the floor is done. I just need to do the baseboards. You want to come and check it out and then send me a check because I'm charging him a thousand bucks for painting the cabinets. It's three fucking days of my life and like $400 worth of materials. Absolutely. I'm charging him. He probably tell you that too much for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He said that what too much. What you buy? You bought gold paint. It was gold. I saw white. I was like, it's enamel oil-based paint, $60 a can. I bought three cans. That's 240 bucks. Or Why you not buy from China? Why are you not buy from Ace? He said, Mr. Love, you not buy from Ace. It's $25 a can. Oh, no, just too much. You share cost with me. I was like, give me a deed to house. You share a deed to house with me. He's like, okay, I'll send you a check. So he's going to send me a check. But then the best part of owning your own business is when you do things right, people ask you for advice. Just so you know, when you do things right, people ask you for advice. So I've got insurance on this. We're insured for up to a million. I think it's any individual loss for up to 150,000, uh, medical, all of it. <coughs> With that, we have internet for the cameras. So we have four cameras, you know, 360, uh, cloud, all of it. The whole uh, nine yards. Battery backup. And the neighbor had seen one of our cameras moving at the nighttime because I guess she lives upstairs, the massage parlor. Oh, no, honey. And the massage parlor did not have no signs, none, from the sign guy that I paid $4,000 for for my signs. Oh, God. So she comes down and she's like, hey, where'd you get that camera with the landlord? Says, well, she needs internet. Can she buy your internet, use your internet on her building? I said, sure. You give me $60 a month, I share internet with you. Okay, I'll give you $60 every 19th every month. I was like, starting now. Pay, you play. Otherwise, no pay, no play. And so he comes by and asks to just split the bill. I was like, all right, you get two devices. You said it was for your, your phone and your cameras. That's it. Anything else gets added, I cut it off, I block it. $60 a month, that's it. It's like, okay, I thank you so much. It's the best. We got to talking about the signs. Turns out <clears throat> I've been overcharged $2,500 for my signs. On top of... She's now been waiting three months for her sign, so I explained to her how to write a legal demand notice and threaten lawsuit. Because I'm now in a lawsuit with somebody else. Totally different topic I'm going to do a solo video about. But a guy tried to fuck me over for like 400 bucks. The point being, I've got insurance against shit like that. Damage, theft, whatever. They probably so we don't. Got, yeah, we got into this whole conversation about like you need to get insurance. Uh, people fucking you over. And then she got into the signs. Then she was like, okay, I buy internet from you. Then she brought me a $200 gift card for fucking massages. Happy massage, honey. She's like, you, you always look so tense. That's why I never got to know you. You seem like you're just off put. Like, don't come near me. And I give you a massage. I make you feel better. Okay, honey. I was like, okay, I'm going to go get a massage. Happy massage for you, honey. All right. But so whatever it is, she's a nice lady. I'm not saying she's completely illegal or doing crazy shit. She, nice lady got to know her. Turns out she's being fucked just as hard as I am by the next door neighbor. And then uh, is she Chinese or Asian? I don't know. I heard uh, Asian she's people not Korean. give the best she's, head because they know how to slurp noodles good. And with that, I'm going to end the day. <laughs> just remember to protect yourself at all times, wherever you come from. Oh, enjoy God, yourself. Then. Live life to the fullest, and we'll catch you during business hours. Life can be super happy, life can be super sad I'm trying super hard to separate the good and bad I'll go back to my future just to get to my past But knowing me, my DeLorean will probably crash